Hello and welcome to our getting started tutorial with Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to model a part and also create a drawing from that part. Notice down in the uh, pictures below this is this will be what we're creating. Uh, the hub on the left and then the drawing of that hub. To get started let's go ahead and come over here to Solid Edge and let's start a blank part using the ANSI standard. I'm just going to click that from the welcome screen. Here I want to create some construction geometry. To do that I'm going to come up and grab my circle by center point. Notice when I come down to my origin I get phi point and I'm at the origin of that coordinate system. I'm going to left click to start and left click to define the radius of my circle. I'm going to come back in and do another circle by center inside of that. Inside of Solid Edge if I take my select tool you'll notice that these closed circles create regions. I want to extrude both regions at the same time, so I'm going to select the outer region. To go in and select multiple regions, I just hit my little drop down over here and click the add and remove mode. Also a little shortcut for that is if you hit the space bar, that will toggle you into that environment as well. Once I'm in add and remove mode, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other region. Notice as I select these regions, a little extrude handle comes up, which I can hit that extrude handle, therefore adding material in that direction. I'm going to type in 0.5 and hit enter on the keyboard to define the extent. I now want to extrude the center region out. Notice just with my select tool, I'm going to select that region. I'm going to go ahead and click my extrude handle and pull my extent towards me. I want to type in 2 and hit enter on the keyboard to accept that value. To tweak our, our design with synchronous technology, I'm going to come in and grab my Smart Dimension tool. And notice by just dimensioning straight to the model, I can place that dimension. Therefore, I can change the value. And notice I'm directly interacting with the model and changing that value to 4 in this case. I'm going to go ahead and take my same Smart Dimension command, which I'm still in, and do the same thing with the smaller cylinder and dimension that to one and a half. Just type it in 1.5 and hit an enter on the keyboard to change that value. The next thing I'm going to do is put a hole in there to, to mount this hub. I'm going to come up to the hole command. Notice I can come over here and grab my hole options. I can add different types of holes, threaded holes, tapered holes, counterbore holes, counter sink holes, <coughs> and the dialog here will adjust with those uh, particular parameters. I'm going to go ahead and keep it as a simple hole, a quarter inch, hit OK, and notice as I preview on top of this face, it instantly starts previewing the hole. To lock to that face, I can just come down and click the little lock symbol, and if I want that to be lined up in the center of my part, I can touch that axis and bring my cursor straight up and notice how it gives me alignment indicator showing me that that hole is vertical. I'm going to go ahead and click to place that to place the hole. The next thing I want to do is dimension that hole from center. So I'm just going to come up and grab my distance between dimension tool. Come in here, I'm going to dimension the center of the, the cylinder. Notice how just by touching that edge, it gives me a center point. I'm going to click once, click the second time on the center point of the hole, and then bring my cursor over here and click to place the dimension. Notice my arrow is pointing straight up in this case. If your arrow is not pointing straight up, you can toggle it and switch the direction of those arrows. This allows you to maintain design intent right at your cursor location. So with my arrow pointing up, in this case, I'm going to type in 1.25 to locate that hole off of center. We want more than one occurrence of this hole, so what I'm going to do is come in and either graphically or over here in Pathfinder, select the hole. I want to come up and create a circular pattern of that. So with underneath the fly out of pattern, I'm going to come up here and click circular. Notice I can bring my cursor down here and just touch on the center of that and it will give me feedback that I'm at the center point of that cylinder. I just click the place and notice that it throws those uh, circular pattern holes around there. For this particular example I want to do a occurrence of 6. I'm going to type in 6 and I can either hit enter on the keyboard or the green check mark to accept that pattern. As you're going through that you'll notice you have your zoom tools down here to be able to zoom up on an area. Notice I can just hold my left mouse button down and zoom up there. I can fit the screen. Also a little a couple other shortcuts and tips and tricks for you. If you hold down your middle mouse wheel, I'm pressing down on it. Notice it'll rotate. If I scroll my middle mouse wheel, it will zoom in the direction of my cursor. Alright, so there is our part. Let's go ahead and save this part. I'm going to go ahead and save this as hub. 
and I also want to create a drawing of that now. So I'm going to come up to create a drawing. I'm going to come up to the application button, go to new, go to create drawing, and this is going to open this uh, wizard for me. In this case, I can browse to my company template if I have one. Uh, I can pick different standards. Notice how deliver with solid edge are 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 both uh, metric and English templates, different standards, ANSI, ISO, um, and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the ANSI, so I'll just cancel back here. I also have the option selected to run the Drawing View Wizard. So what the Drawing View Wizard is going to do is it's going to, first of all, open that particular template, and then it's going to ask me questions for how I want the Drawing View to be on the sheet. So I'm just going to click Next because I want the design body on there. Notice if I click front, this will be the front view of my particular part that we're going to place on a drawing. If I'm not sure what that front view is, I can click custom and it'll give me a front view of that. I could also create a custom view using my view manipulation tools. On the next sheet, on the next page I should say, you'll see that I can toggle up to nine views at one time and place them on the drawing. The front is already selected. I'm going to go ahead and select the top, the right, and the isometric view. Click finish. Those views are associated with my cursor. I can click to place those. Notice I can also change the scale at this point in time. I'm going to keep these as a one-to-one -one scale and just click to place them. Notice if I click one of the top front or right views, I can hold down my left mouse button and drag those around. Notice how they maintain alignment. I can also change the scale of those. So if I select one of them, I can come up and change that to a two-to-one scale. Also, I can do the same thing with the isometric view just by selecting it and changing the scale. Also with the isometric view, or any view I should say, I can come over here and make it more of a rendered view or a shaded view. I'm going to select shaded with edges and come over here and update my drawing views. To go ahead and start detailing this particular drawing, I'm going to come over here and click my retrieve dimension. If you remember those dimensions, those 3D driving dimensions I had on the model, I can retrieve that information here just by selecting the view. I can also do something very similar with automatic center lines. I'm going to select the automatic center line command and select each of those views as well. Notice that puts those center marks and center lines on the drawing for me. I'm going to go ahead and fit my screen so I can see my entire drawing. The next thing we may want to do is create a section view of this. To create a section view, I need a cutting plane first. So I'm going to select the cutting plane, select this front view. It's going to put me in my, my line uh, drawing mode. I'm going to come down here and just reference something in the center and draw a vertical line right down through the center of that part. I can close my cutting plane, then click to define the, the direction for my cutting plane, basically which way it's going to be cut. Then I come in with my section view command, select that cutting plane, click the place, and with just a couple clicks there is the section view on my, my drawing. Also, you can customize your templates, build your templates for size, style, and so forth. What I'm going to do here is right click on this particular dimension, go to properties, and if I go to the text tab, I can increase the font size. So that's a little larger. That There I did it just for the one dimension, but I can also come in and do that globally for, for all dimensions on the drawing. Notice if I come up here to Styles, for the dimensions I can modify this ANSI inch style, which I'm using in this particular template. I just click Modify. This is the same dialog you saw just a second ago. If I click Text, I am come in here and change the value for that, and click Apply, and that'll apply that to all the dimensions on my drawing. Notice how they're now a larger font. Once again, as we, we discussed earlier, you can use your zoom area tools to zoom up on the different areas of your drawing. Uh, here's your regular zoom, zoom tool just by holding my left mouse button down, moving my cursor, my mouse back and forth. Once again, I can fit the screen. This concludes our Solid Edge Getting Started tutorial. If you have any questions, please let our tech support staff at Ally PLM know. Uh, my name is Brandon Carter, and thanks for tuning in.